Our Padhan was founded in 1896. Hungarian immigrants were coming into the area and by 1905, a number of Hungarian Catholic families were in the area. In that same year, there is an account of a baptism and a marriage performed by the pastor of Jessen, now Rosaryville. And so the Hungarians of Arbatan were gradually establishing themselves a Catholic church. It is only about eight miles from St. Margaret to Rosaryville. In 1909, the official title of St. Margaret was used, which meant that it was canonically recognized as a parish. No building has taken up place to this time. A 20-acre tract of land was donated by Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Hugh House. Smaller parcels of land were offered, but the bishop wanted enough land for various buildings and a cemetery. Construction on St. Margaret Church began in 1910 and was completed in 1912. Frank Kiss, a northern contractor, was hired for the job. The rough lumber was donated by the nearby Brackenridge Lumber Company. The flooring and finishing materials came from Thomas Lumber Company in Hammond. Helping Mr. Kiss were all available Catholic men in the community who worked free of charge. Completion was slow. It was not until May 28, 1912 at the Benedictine Abbot informed Archbishop Blank of New Orleans that the Hungarian church at Albany was ready for the blessing. We are standing in the original church that was built in 1910 by our Hungarian settlements here at St. Margaret Queen of Scotland in Albany, Louisiana. Our community enjoys a wonderful rich history with the establishment of the church all the way through the different priests and various organizations that actually led this community of faith over the years. Beginning with the Benedictine community who used their charism of always praying and working ceaselessly to lead this community of faith to do the same, to find conversion of heart, reconciliation and strength by going ahead and using their work as a means of prayer. After the Benedictines established their particular prayerful hierarchy here at St. Margaret, the Dominican order eventually bought the property where the Benedictine monastery once stood and from then in the history of St. Margaret, Dominican priests served this particular area. Dominicans are well known for their sense of being able to preach the good news of the gospel. So as the community continued to flourish, through the leadership of the Dominicans, always constantly involving people through their preaching, so did the community grow in faith and stature. Eventually, that organization, that order, was replaced with another group, the Oblates of Mary Immaculate. Based in various centers throughout our country, in Belleville, Illinois, in Texas, this community of priests served St. Margaret for the longest throughout its history. Their particular charism was always based on a missionary zeal to attract more and more people. And they did that in that community of faith as well by continuing to attract not only the Hungarian settlement, but all those people who lived in this particular community of faith. Now the community is stuck with diocesan priests, of which I am a part. And we continue to help our community grow in faith and stature by assimilating it and making it one of the normal parishes that make up the 60 somewhat parishes in our diocese of Baton Rouge. And we find ourselves on the precipice of things so great. More and more people continue to move into our community from various areas throughout our state. And more and more people continue to seek the sacraments and conversion of heart by becoming an active part of our faith community. As it stands, there are now some 700 families who make up St. Margaret, Queen of Scotland Catholic Church, and we are sure that over the next hundred or many more years afterwards, more and more people will be invited to do the same. No one is certain about how the church received the name St. Margaret, but it has been said that a lady with the same name made a nice monetary contribution and asked that the church be named after St. Margaret. St. Margaret, Queen of Scotland, was canonized in 1250. A Hungarian by royal birth, she was born in Hungary in 1046. She married Malcolm III of Scotland. The blessing of St. Margaret Catholic Church took place on September 8, 1912. And the blessing was led by the Reverend Archbishop, I assume who came from New Orleans, but there are no documents giving his name and he was met by Father Ennis, who was the Hungarian mission priest, along with a group of men and women and a band about a half mile from St. Margaret's Church, where they played music and sang all the way in a procession 
until they got to St. Margaret's. And they were met at the front of the church with the bell, which had been removed from the tower and decorated with flowers. And then when the bell was blessed, it was put back in the church and mass began. And it was a beautiful ceremony. 35 members of the congregation were confirmed as well. And when the celebration was over, Mr. and Mrs. Joe Uhouse, who had donated the 20 acres of land for St. Margaret and all of its outer buildings, held a big dinner in their home for the bishop, the priests, and the Dominican sisters who were also within the group. And there was Hungarian singing, dances from the old country, good food, and it was just wonderful fellowship. And what the blessing of this church did was to give the Hungarian Catholics a true sense that they were home in America, they were able to practice their Catholic faith in a building that meant much to them. My great-grandfather, Adam Moxeri, was one of the founders of the Hungarian settlement, or Arvpadhan, and he would have been among that group who would have been joyously celebrating the celebration that brought this group serenity and peace and a place to worship their Catholic faith. St. Margaret Parochial School was housed in a one-room schoolhouse next to the church. During its short existence from 1914 to 1918, the peak en enrollment probably reached about 60 students in grades one through six. Parishioners fondly recall the names of their teachers, Mrs. Fox and Mrs. Letch. Many of the children during this time received all of their formal education in this school. The parochial school of St. Margaret was opened in 1914, two years after the church was established, and it lasted until 1918. And there were two teachers who were considered two of the most remarkable women, a Mrs. Fox and a Mrs. Lesh, who left a legacy with many of the older parishioners who were still able to have memories of them in 1985 when we held our 75th anniversary. And what they've been able to share is that these two women taught grades one through six, and the subjects that were primarily the focus were spelling, the alphabet, reading, and arithmetic. And many of the girls, the older girls, would tutor the younger girls. The boys were never allowed to tutor because they were not considered to be taking school seriously, so they were left out when it came to tutoring. But they used what were tra very traditional methods of teaching, which probably did help the language skills of these children who were speaking, I would assume, only English at school and only Hungarian at home. Uh, they would sing, oftentimes hymns or traditional songs. They would recite poetry. They would recite facts repeatedly. They would do simple math problems on slates with chalk. And the children attended mass on a regular basis. I don't know if it was daily or weekly. I could not find that in the historical information, but it was a very major part of their education. They would pray daily, and when the children finished sixth grade, they were then sent either back home with no further education, or when Albany and Springfield opened their public schools, some of the children enrolled there. And the parents who could afford 50 cents or a dollar for a month of their child's education would give that to Mrs. Fox and Mrs. Lesh. So I would assume for some of the parents it may have been a financial hardship, but they thought it was worth it because they wanted to educate their children in America. In many of our communities of faith throughout Southeast Louisiana, church ends up being the center of any type of activity within a community of faith. People not only identify with the civic organization, but more or less they identify with their faith communities. So here in the Hungarian settlement, people of Catholic origin would necessarily identify with St. Margaret, Queen of Scotland. Those who participated in the Presbyterian faith would likewise participate in their local church here in the Hungarian settlement as well. Usually different establishments of faith often bring about various activities, whether it be the dances, parties, festivities, or even eating as we're so accustomed to. Those particular events end up attracting more and more people not only to share faith, but also share the things that bind them as a community of believers. 
In 1927, St. Margaret became an official church parish and accepted officially the duties and responsibilities of administering to the four mission churches, as well as assuming the official position of church parish in this area. The missions were Immaculate Conception, Denham Springs, 1920, Sacred Heart, Livingston, 1920, St. Mary, Bear Island, 1923, St. Thomas, Springfield, 1940. Only St. Thomas remains a mission today. St. Thomas Chapel, located in Springfield, Louisiana, was built in 1940. Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Slew of New Orleans bequeathed a large sum of money to build the church in memory of their deceased son, Thomas. Money was also set aside for maintenance and improvements. In the 1930s, it was not as easy to travel to St. Margaret as it is today. Consequently, the people in Springfield were happy to have a church so near. Mass was celebrated only twice monthly because St. Margaret had three other mission churches. In the 1960s, only St. Thomas remained as a mission. Mass is now celebrated every Sunday. When St. Thomas Church was built in Springfield, the people had no idea how much it would help them. They were able to have their marriages there and their baptisms and the children could come from the schools and have catechism. It was situated on Main Street where when the people passed in their buggies or whatever mode of transportation they had, they could look up and admire the beautiful building that was standing there that was a gift to them from the Slew family. St. Thomas being a mission from St. Margaret's Church in Albany was uh, able to take care of the people in Springfield because they didn't have to travel all the way to Albany. Their masses were said twice a week, twice a month at St. Thomas in the beginning. The benefit of having this mission church was so that the people, the Catholics in Springfield did not have to travel to Albany, Louisiana to go to catechism, to have their marriages or the christenings and it was more convenient for them. The Missionary Servants of the Most Holy Eucharist was an order of nuns established in 1927 at St. Margaret Church. The order was founded by Catherine Bostick and Margaret Grouch. They lived in a small convent near the church from 1927 until 1935. Outgrowing these small quarters, they moved to New Orleans in 1935. Their numbers continued to grow. In 1956, the sisters affiliated with the Dominicans, changing their names to Eucharist Ministries of the St. Dominic. In 2009, they merged with a larger order, the Dominican Sisters of Peace. The nuns came here. Um, they were sent by the Archbishop of New Orleans to serve in the St. Margaret Parish as missionaries to help the people. Many of the people could not speak English and many were very poor. They relied on farming for an income. So the nuns came and really made a big impact teaching the students religion. Um, they gave religion classes to the adults. They worked with the altar society. They formed an altar society and worked with the ladies. They were responsible for cleaning the church. They did home visits. They were just everywhere that we were. Our whole life centered around the church and the nuns. The nuns became very good friends with all of us. I actually still correspond with a couple of them that are still alive. Most of the ones that served here are deceased at this point in time, but they left a beautiful legacy of teaching us. We had a sodality group. We um, met for communion once a month. They were in the homes. They made in the hall, the ladies would come together and they would make jelly and they would do things like teach us the square dance and they would have busloads of ladies to come from New Orleans to bring Easter baskets and cakes and pastries. And it was just a very wonderful time in our history to have them here. From 1914 to 1918, St. Margaret had a school. During that time, religious education was taught in this building. With the closing of the school in 1918, the building took on other uses, a pool hall, 
convent for the recently formed nuns. Consequently, religious education classes were held in all kinds of inadequate spaces, the parish hall, the church, and even under trees. In 1985, a committee was formed to make plans for a new religious education center. The facility would have classrooms sufficient to house grades one through seven, an assembly area, a library, a small museum, stores, and restrooms. The architectural firm was Newman and Grace Architects and Denver Hearst was the construction company. The cost was $291,800. Our first diocesan priest, Father Brian Gray, when he arrived here saw a great need for us to have a place to teach religious education to the children. Before the religious education building was built, we would teach several classes in the church, several classes in the big hall, and we had another smaller structure in the back that two classes could be taught in. However, there was no heating or no cooling in those buildings, and it was very hot in the summer and very cold in the winter. And oftentimes, when two or three classes would meet even here in the church, they would kind of distract each other. So Father Brian Gray, had us to build the Religious Education Center, which served a beautiful purpose. It also contained a library and some offices, but gave us very nice space. Father Jamin has now updated that and put all the most modern technology in, and it is a joy for us to teach religious education in that building. This was a great milestone for St. Margaret Catholic Church. Its centennial was celebrated in 2010 with a mass by Bishop Munch of the Diocese of Baton Rouge. Following was a reception in the church hall. How do you measure the success of a church? The sacraments, baptism, Eucharist, confirmation, marriage, reconciliation, and anointing are provided on a regular basis for all parishioners. Church enrollment in 2014 is at an all-time high, approximately 700 families. Baptisms, First Communions, and Confirmations are increasing. The centennial was celebrated just a few years back here at St. Margaret, Queen of Scotland. Bishop Munch, our bishop here in the Diocese of Baton Rouge, celebrated with other priests who at one time served our faith community. We've moved past that centennial now to our 104th year, and we look forward to celebrating another 100 years together as a community of faith. The centennial really did express, though, what we still express today as a community of faith. St. Margaret has been a pillar of this community and will continue to be so for many more years in the future.